Hey guys, how's it going? Just doing a quick mic check just to see if you um, can hear me and see me okay. It looks like looks like it's okay over there. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do today is I'm actually just going to give you guys a <clears throat> a completely foundational lesson on where Facebook ads are in the marketplace because the next lesson is what I'm teaching in lesson two is basically how to um, position and sell Facebook ads as a service, um, at least in the capacity that I showed you guys during the case study. So what I'm gonna do is actually give you the primer for that today, and then in the next lesson, which will be um, either later today or tomorrow probably, what I'm gonna do is actually show you how to position that within the marketplace because if you get that wrong, you're gonna undercharge and your clients are gonna realize the value of what's, you know, what the true value of Facebook ads is. So um, this is a really important step for some of you, maybe a little bit of review, but I, this is so much different than other th things out there. And even within paid traffic, it's kind of got some nuances. So it's really important to cover and really important for you guys to, um, to nail this and understand it so you can turn around and talk to your clients and prospects about it the right way. That's why I'm so passionate about teaching this step to you. So um, <clears throat> another thing we're gonna, we're gonna cover today is how, um, basically how, how to get started with the lowest hanging fruit as far as what sort of industries and verticals and niches um, do better with Facebook ads than others because that's another thing that people get wrong right off the bat and it's another foundational thing you need to understand is why certain niches do a lot better in the context of Facebook ads. Um, so th that's what we're gonna cover today. I'm hoping to get through it in about like 30 to 45 minutes and get through it pretty quick. Um, and then I'll stop to take questions in between if you guys have any live questions. Um, and as always, if you're watching this after the live video is done, just go ahead and type in the comments below and I'll um, respond to them uh, as fast as I can get to them, all right? So I'm just gonna do a quick, um, uh, audio check just to make sure that all the audio is working. Hang on. Okay. Okay. All right. Looks like everything's good. If you guys see anything that, um, like if you can't see the whiteboard or if my audio sounds funny or any of that, just type it in the um, comments there and I'll fix it for you. But to me it looks good, so I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, okay, so let, let's look at Facebook ads as far as the value of the marketplace, all right? So value in. Okay, so here's, here's the thing I want for you guys to understand is that what we're selling when we're talking about doing Facebook ads for local clients, um, we're not selling social media, we're not selling content, we're not selling engagement or community or mo moderation or any of those things. With this method, you know, we're selling leads. It's lead generation. So, um, leads, not X, Y, or Z. So when, when you're positioning the service, the value in the marketplace isn't what, well, it can be. If, if you're selling social media as a service, like management and page moderation, all that stuff, that has its place, right? If you follow Gary Vaynerchuk, you understand the value of that, uh, hopefully. But for most local small business owners, it just does not equate to the bottom line. They just cannot get those dots to connect. And so basically, uh, Cool, thanks Ben Kendall, I appreciate that buddy. Um, so essentially uh, what what we wanna do is take their mind out of that and, and just say, look, this isn't social media. What we're doing is lead generation and direct response. But the, the platform that we're doing it on is Facebook and Instagram, okay? So what I try to do is, is have my positioning statement, which we'll, we'll get to a little bit later, um, and we'll break that down, but my positioning statement goes something like this. Um, hey, my name is Rob Bailey, and I specialize in helping um, gym and fitness studios to 
generate more members at a profit each month using Facebook and Instagram ads, okay? So I don't say anything about social media. I don't say we'll do, you know, other stuff, X, Y, and Z, whatever that might be. I strictly talk about lead generation. I will get you new members in the first month. Here's how I do it. I specialize in helping a business that just looks just like yours. Okay, so that's, that's my positioning statement and we'll get into how to craft your positioning statement and what to say in the next lesson. But here's why this, that's important. The value in the marketplace for lead generation is much higher than you probably think and it's for sure much higher than the client thinks, okay? And so this comes down to math, right? So let's, let's talk about leads in the marketplace, all right? So if you've got a gym, a gym client as an example, the way that I position this, the first thing I do when I get on the phone is I ask the, the, um, the prospect or the, um, the client, or excuse me, the prospect at this point, I say, look, it looks like, you know, from my experience, it looks like, um, you know, f f for your industry, like you're like a lot of people in this industry, and it appears to be that the average yearly value of a new member to your gym or fitness facility is about $1,000. Do I have that right? Um, so let's just say, for the sake of arguing, that it's $1,000 a year for a new client, for a new uh, member. can take a quick drink um, and that's not uncommon for a lot of small businesses like even if you're talking to like a dentist or a chiropractor or something that's very easy to hit you know a thousand bucks on the year yeah that's really easy to hit for a lot of um, niches so um, I'm gonna use the gym client example because that's the one that we use in the case study but um, so the if you came right out and said, look, I can get you 10, 10 new members each, each month, right? Um, that would be a good goal, like a really safe goal, a goal that you could probably hit. And, and you could come in with that confidence with the business owner and the business owner might not get excited about 10 new members until you piece this together for him like this. Okay. Well, Mr. Business owner, if I could bring you 10 new members a month and each new member is worth a thousand dollars a year to you. How, how how excited would you get about it, about that, right? Well, let's do again. Let's do the math. So, ten. Um, so let's let's do it this way. Month one. Month one, ten new times one k a year equals ten k a year and new business, right? Okay, so all things considered, if we did this for 12, 12 months a, in a year, which is, again, it's a very achievable goal um, when you're doing paid traffic through Facebook, if you do it the right way, that's $120,000 a year that you could add in revenue to the, to the gym owner's business, okay? So 12 months times 10K a year, 120K. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are getting more excited, but if you could add just 10 new members to a gym, you know, per month, and you did that for 12 months, that gym owner would add six figures to their business, okay? So hopefully by now you're starting to wrap your head around how valuable this sort of service is. And in the context of that, let's say a gym owner has baseline cost of X. So let's just call it 10 grand a month. And whether they have one person show up for a class or 5,000 people show up for a class, they still have the same amount of baseline costs. They still have to pay an instructor to show up. They still have to clean the facility. They still have to pay the bills for the lights and everything. So if you can add $120,000 to most fitness businesses, they should be jumping out of their seat because that's almost all pure profit that you just added. To their business okay so and this is why the group based fitness niche is so great it's why I love it um, it's not like that for all businesses but 
Um, that's why this is so easy to sell at $1,000 a month for your service fee plus ad spend. Because if you're charging um, fee of 1K, and then five, let's just call it, let's go high and say $1,000 a month spend, and call it 2,000 bucks. Well, if they're paying you 2,000 bucks to get 10, that's 8,000 8, per month that they're profiting, okay? So 8,000 times 12 is like 96, I think. Is that right? Yeah, so take 12 away, or maybe it's 108 or something like that. But anyways, it's still close to six figures. They're still netting six figures a year. Now, here's the interesting thing is I've had clients who do not get excited about this at the beginning, the prospects, and then I spell it out for them like in a spreadsheet and I go through month one and I say, but look, that's just, you know, this is just month one, right? Like if I could grow that number to 25 or 30 in month two for you, because we added it, you know, we either got better at the ads or we added, we started marketing another class that you have or something like that. Let's, let's look at what month two looks like, okay? So this is just the baseline. This is just the raw math of it, right? But let's look at what should really, really get a business owner excited if you're, um, if you're gonna spell it out for them, okay? So well, let's do it this way. Month one, month two, month three, month four, okay? So, So here's why it's it's so awesome to do lead generation using paid traffic. I was just telling you about the sales right there, but what they're also doing is like, what we're doing is we're getting leads for this niche for like between three and four dollars. So for um, for like my gym client, we got them like over a hundred hundred leads. I think um, it's more than that. So that's just use easy math. Um, so they spent about 500 bucks, if you remember, from the case study in one month. And um, so it's, they got a, more leads than this. I think it was like 160, but I, I'll just keep it at 100 and make the math easy. Um, so what we'll do is say, uh, like, look, look, again, if they did this, they would spend, let's just call it 400 bucks and $1,000 in fee. So that's 1,400 bucks. Um, So total out of pocket, pocket they got, they spent 1400 bucks, right? Now here's the thing, is in that month, they probably didn't collect all the yearly fee. That's just the reality of it, right? Well, for my client, I think they collected um, something like 4,000 bucks up front because they did, it's probably more like 3,000. I think they, they collect about 300 bucks in the first month. So 300 times 10 is three grand. So, and the difference of that is 1,600 upfront, okay, that they pocketed, so that's profit in month one. Well, the beauty of this is like, if you only got 10 members, you still have 90 leads to work in month two. So there's some leads right here that converted, 90 leads. Some of those converted in month two, right? Because in month one, they just said like, well, I'm not ready yet, I'm on vacation, or I'm not ready to come and take, take up my free pass, I'm not gonna go back to the gym until my kids are back in school, like whatever the case may be, right? So some of those 90 leads convert, but you're also adding more to month two, okay? So this is where I get the business owners really excited if they're tough on this. And I say, now you've got 90 leads to follow up with in your spreadsheet, and for my gym client, there's like over 500 of these in there now, and only about 10% of them have been closed, you know, in a sale um, in the past like month or two, but They've got all of these leads, these people who are still coming in, still doing their trials, still being followed up with and marketed to and so and you know um, sold to. So those 90 leads go like if 10% of those convert, that's nine new members. And that's an extra 9k in yearly. And let's do like um Gosh, what did we decide? 300 is 3,000 minus, um, so 2,700 now, plus everything that we did right here because we're running, you know, we're running new ads. So, 
So if they did all this math as well, they're gonna add 100, 100 new leads, and they're gonna get 10 new members on average, right? 1,600 profit now. And, um, you know, yearly is still gonna be 10K. Okay, pretty rad, right? And then next month, they're gonna have 180 leads, or I'm sorry, 170-ish um, leads that have not converted yet. Because 10 of these probably closed, right? So this just keeps getting better and better and better every single month. And they're growing their list, they're getting new prospects into the pipeline, and they're closing people at a profit each month, each step of the way. So it, even in month one, they're closing new business at a profit, and then they're um, rolling that into the next month. So by the end, of, they don't even have to technically pay us with any cash flow. Like if they get started with us on a credit card and pay Facebook ads with a credit card, they get 30 days to pay the bill. So by the time this closes out, they've collected 1,600 bucks. Plus they've got recurring revenue for the next 11 months on average, right? So they're winning. <laughs> they're profitably acquiring new members, okay? That's why this is so powerful. It's like a snowball. It just goes like this. Um, snowball gets bigger every month, okay? So this is a very, very important um, key thing to understand is your value in the marketplace when you're doing paid traffic and lead generation, helping them acquire new customers at a profit every month is way, way more valuable than meets the eye, okay? So, you know, 1,600 bucks might not be super exciting to a business owner or to you. You might say, well, you're taking half my profit the first month. You go, yeah, but I just added six figures to your business. Would you pay 10% of, of the six figures if I could bring that to you? Like, no brainer, right? 10% of 120 grand is like 1,200 bucks. Or, I'm sorry, 12,000 bucks. That's 1,000 bucks a month. Okay, very easy to hit. Very, like, business owners are greedy if they want to take, you know, like, I've had business owners after that say, well, I think it's actually worth a little more to bring that to us. It's like all profit, you know? I'm like, yeah, I think so too, you know? And that's when you get to start to really understand how much value you're bringing to their business over a long period of time. So if you can get them to understand this concept, this gets really good really fast for them. And all of a sudden their cash, the cash in their account after two months, three months starts to really balloon and grow. And the, the gym is busy. They see it. So don't underestimate how valuable your service is in the marketplace. I always try to charge at least a thousand bucks, but that's just sort of like a rule of thumb, if you will. And I honestly don't think that like um, many gym owners understand this. So I try to teach it to them on a conceptual basis at the very least so that they understand how much like the cumulative effect of this paid traffic method that we're installing for them. Okay. So really, really important that you guys understand that and really, really important that you're able to talk about that if the client's giving you resistance because this isn't like anything else out there, really. Like, you know, Google's not gonna give you three to four dollar leads. Google AdWords isn't. SEO takes a long time and it's hard to scale. And it's unpredictable. Groupon is here today, gone the next. Um, email marketing probably has similar ROI, but you can't grow like scale your email marketing unless you're constantly adding new leads to your email email list, you know? So this can be very, very, very good for them. This can be, they can just do this and grow their gym, like they could double their gym business by the end, you know, the end of the year potentially, like literally, it could be that good for them. So don't underestimate the value in the marketplace for this, okay? Um, I'm not gonna harp on that too much because I think you get the point, but if, um, if the businesses that you approach have a recurring revenue model or a value scale model, so like a dentist doesn't have a recurring revenue model, but it goes teeth cleaning, you know, um, teeth cleaning, teeth whitening, crown repair, um, like root canal, like I don't know what they are after that, but braces, you know, all those things are sort of upsells and it's a value ladder that they take them up on. If they know those numbers really well, you can easily map this out for them. 
okay? So if they know an average year X happens, and that's just the average of them all, well, the numbers are gonna play out well if you continually add fresh blood to the pipeline. <laughs> it's say fresh blood, but that's what it is. And so basically, you know, if you guys can get good at conceptualizing this and talk about it that way and stay completely away from the social media stuff and the ads and the mechanics of all that, it's about lead generation. It's about profitably acquiring customers. You're gonna win. You're gonna win big, okay? And so are your clients. It's great. Um, okay, cool. So that's sort of the math of it. That's how all this rolls out. Um, what I'm gonna do now is actually just show you guys um, Now that you understand the value in the marketplace for what this service can offer and how you can make money and, and really add value to, to, the, um, to the marketplace, now I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I learned as far as which ones do, which industries do better on Facebook ads than others and why, okay? So I'm gonna actually um, write this out like, Easy, intermediate, and difficult. Okay, so this is something that um, I've learned both through experience and also asking a lot of other people who run Facebook ads. So, um, what I want to do is just show you um, a few easy ones to win on because those are like the lowest hanging fruit, if you will, um, and some intermediate ones and some difficult ones because you guys are probably going, oh, I know a business owner who does X, right? And this might work for them or you're wondering, does it work for them? Well, yes, you, you can probably do well with anything if you figured it out and you waited long enough and you put enough time and money into it, okay? But if you're looking for an e easy win, I'm getting old now, I want the easy wins first, and then we can work up from there. <laughs> um, these are things that don't require a lot of thinking for the person who who is on Facebook to take action on, okay? The easiest ones are the things that require the least amount of education to sell or for them to jump on, okay? So dentist, Chiropractors are great. Um, gyms, fitness, fit clubs is what I call them. So anything with a group-based um, fitness class, those are fantastic, like yoga, Pilates studio, things like that. Um, uh, enter I'll just say entertainment. So that's bars, nightclubs, restaurants, anything like that. So um, if you see, for example, like anything that's on Groupon that's a service, not a product, is very, very easy to sell on Facebook from an offer standpoint, and those are great clients to go after. So if you go into Groupon and um, and just look at the list of offers like in your city and see which ones are service-based, not products. So don't like go for the iPhone case guy, the margins are too low. But for services, there's lots of margin because there's no typically little to no cost of goods involved with the, you know, when you sell a unit. So um, this could be like massage, right? Um, so health, health stuff. Um, it could also be experience-based things, so Like here in San Diego, we've got a ton of experience-based stuff like, um, you know, go on the trolley uh, around downtown for a tour, or um, let me think about what else. Um, so we've got these like seal tours. It's like a, like a huge, it looks like a huge boat on wheels, like a butt cross between a bus and a boat, and it's amphibious. And people love it because they can get a tour of the town and then it just drives right into the water <laughs> and it turns the motor on and this thing just goes and take, you take a uh, tour of the bay and you see seals and like, you know, all the wildlife in the bay and you can also see downtown San Diego, awesome. Um, baseball games, horse racing tracks, um, concerts are great. 
um, music venues, like all these things that are like an experience for people or things that maybe they'd never tried that are super fun, like, um, you know, um, bouncy house things for kids or there's this like um, thing where you put a big bubble on and you play soccer with a bunch of people and you just run into each other and the bubble kind of protects you and you all bounce around, something like that. Um, jump houses, sky zones where you're floating, you know, all this stuff sells so well because it's fun, it's easy to sell, and it's an experience. And if you think about why people are on Facebook, they're actually there to escape, you know. They're there to basically like, you know, look at puppies and cats and babies and stuff, but the, really they're there to escape and stop thinking about work, stress, life for a minute. Um, so all those things do super, super well there. Um, intermediate stuff is like, um, uh, yeah. So professional services basically and big ticket items. So this is professional services, big ticket consumer stuff. Um, real estate is a tougher one. So professional services, this one's a little tougher because like, let's just take an accountant or CPA, for example. It's typically like in the person's mind, there's very, so little no, um, very little to no differentiation in these services to somebody in a consumer mindset. So it's, it's a business to business play most of the time, but, um, you know, you kind of have to just catch them at the right time when they're ready to buy something like that anyway. So it's a tougher sell on Facebook because um, whereas we're providing an offer that for something that either provides immediate pain or pleasure here, these are things that they probably know that they should take care of. It's not really solving an immediate need, but it's something that like they should do. So what you'll find is like with a lot of professional services, like, um, you know, let's take like a, like like an attorney or a tax accountant or a tax lawyer or um, like a bookkeeper or something like that. People put stuff like that off or they go and just go into Google and like research it, you know, and find people based on reviews. Um, same thing with big ticket com consumer stuff. If you're trying to sell like, uh, like it's hard harder to sell on Facebook for car dealerships. It's harder to sell for um, like, um, like, mortgage a, mor a mortgage broker that one's tough too tougher um and you know the reason for that is these are longer sales cycles and they're bigger ticket items as well okay so the person's going to think about it a lot more um and they're not going to be as responsive to an ad as they would if it's funner and easier and you know no education or research required so moderate amount of research moderate amount of motivation to do it right now and that's why these ones are a little tougher um what else would I add in there? This one is kind of like, and I've done um, open house listings for um, for real estate agents, and it is it is a little tougher to get consistent results. I've gotten great results for some, and some it's been like medium to okay, and then there's been a handful where I've had to just refund their money because the campaign bombed. So that's not as fun to me as just going <laughs> straight for the jugular on the easy ones um, because it's more predictable, easier to make money, I like helping them, everybody wins, it's just better all around. Um, things that are super difficult are like, you know, things that are intangible. So I'll put in tangible. Um, so digital products, um, coaching, courses, these are all sort of advanced, and the reason why is because um, it's very difficult to create enough perceived value for these things. So, um, things that are intangible, like if you're selling a book, somebody gets something physical. Well, people love getting physical things in the mail, or they love purchasing physical things. But if you're selling an ebook and it's intangible, you have to create enough value for them to go, oh, well, I'm just going to buy some information. You know, it's a lot tougher of a sale, and your conversion numbers are a lot lower than, say, like, um, you know, dentist or Cairo or, or something like that. So like with, in the case of the gyms, we're converting, we're getting leads at three to four bucks and we're converting like like about 10% of them. Over here, a lead could cost five to up to 25 bucks. And um, 
your conversion rate might be like one or two percent like two percent would be good <laughs> over here okay so that's the difference massive difference um, it might be 20 to 50 X harder 50 times harder so um, things like that don't do as well oh I was gonna add one here as well like professional events those are a little bit tougher of a sell like meetups you know for business things like that b2b is tougher but and it can be done I know some people who do it really well it's just way advanced there's a lot more to it a lot of figuring it out it's harder to get immediate ROI so um, easy is where the lowest hanging fruit is for ROI intermediate is like stuff you can graduate to um, it's not I wouldn't recommend starting with any of these even and difficult is stuff that I would only do if you were super advanced and you were doing, you had success doing easy and intermediate ones first. Um, so that's kind of it for that. I hope that helps clarify. I do think that um, there's a lot of um, ones that I didn't list. So if you guys have questions about those, just think about how they fall into one of these descriptions and where they might lie. Um, a good rule of thumb as well is like if the sales cycle is super long or the cost is super high, those things are more difficult. If something takes more education to sell, if you have to describe it a lot more, like people know that, you know, going out for a movie, they know what a deal is right away. They know that tickets are 10 to 15 bucks or something or 15 to 20 if you go to a fancy place. And um, so if they can get them for 10 bucks, they know that's a deal, right? Like, or if you can get two for, Two for 15, that's a deal. They just know that, right? So it requires no education. Um, if you're having to educate your customer, if you're writing the ad and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm writing a book just to describe that thing, it's gonna be harder, right? So that's it for, for that. And you know, again, what we're looking for is to, to be able to deliver the most amount of value to the marketplace. And that's where your fee is the easiest to be justified the highest. That's basically why we're doing this, right? Like our business model is a recurring revenue model. And if we help a business with a recurring revenue model and add massive value to that marketplace by bringing, by matching that business with their potential customers and prospects, and they're make, making money hand, hand over fist, it's very easy for us to charge our monthly recurring fee and they, you know, it's easy for them to stay with us for a long period of time. So that's how that works. Um, so let's really quickly shift to you now. Like, how can you make money with this? And I'll do the, the um, I'll do, so this is your, your income. So this is how easy it is to make, um, make some good money with this. Okay, so if you, so now that we, we understand the economics of lead generation and what where our value is in the marketplace and which, which areas are the easiest to add value to the fastest, let's take a look at how fast you can build your income, okay? So um, if you do, let's just say you're charging a thousand a month, which I think is easy and fair for the, for the, um, the, the green section that I just had up on the board, and you just got one new client a month. Month one, you do 1K, and then you do 1K, 1K, and then 1K, 1K, 1K. You get the idea. Okay, and this is monthly recurring revenue. So this is just if you added one new client every single month, right? But what I found is that once you um, find success in one vertical. So for me, that's been real estate agents, gyms, and then there's another vertical that we um, don't really publicize because uh, it's a pretty easy one for competition to come in and get. <laughs> but if, if we can do um, just, the, just one and find success with it and create a case study from it, it's much easier to sell people down the line because you're just installing the same thing for them at a different location basically. But if you, if you can do a case study video after you get your first win, what more normally happens is month one, you book that person, you do whatever it takes to get that case study under your belt. And then month two, it's not only easy to add like one more client, it's actually easy to add like three in one month. So, 
Okay, and then once you do that and, and you're starting to prove your method out, then um, you know it's easy for, for you to multiply that again. And so if you got three new ones in month two and just got three new ones after that, Um, you could easily get up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven K by month three. Like that is not difficult to do. Um, and in fact, there's some people who do much better in month one, like they've got previous clients that they've worked with and easy niches or relationships there. And I know some guys who've come in and done a lot better than that really, really fast, but I'm just giving you like the most conservative, like if you're just breaking into this brand new and you don't know anyone in the niche, this is totally achievable for that reason. So. I'll give you an example. Um, one of my best paying clients ever has a ton of locations. And once we prove the model for one of their locations, the owner owns several more locations. So he just said, yep, that works. Sign me up for all of them, right? And so that's how I got this going real fast once I figured out what I was doing. And that's how you guys can too. So like in my billing statement to them, it's the same service, the same funnel, the same Facebook ads campaign, but it just goes location one, location two, location three, location four. And then my invoice to him, he, I just give that one invoice to him and he pays it every single month for all the, all the locations, okay? So essentially what we're trying to do here is say, um, you know, save ourselves from like breaking into a new niche or solving a new problem for a, a different marketplace. What we want to do is stay narrow, okay? So this is easy to do if you stay narrow in your lane. So. I kind of did this on purpose, but the more that you stay in your lane, the more you can stack up recurring clients like this. So if these are all gym clients, gym client, gym client, gym client, gym client, gym client, super easy to do this. If each one of these is um, real estate agent, gym client, um, I don't know, chiropractor, and that one's like a car dealership, it is a lot harder to do that, <laughs> okay? So what I'd recommend doing to get, to stack up as many of these as possible is basically to take your, um, to pick a niche in the easy category, make a list of all the people that you know. If you know somebody that you can approach and say, hey, I'd love to do a free trial for you just to get a case study, and then after the trial, I'm confident it'll work, but once I prove results, then we'll, you know, I'll charge you a small monthly fee. It's a fraction of the profit that you can be putting in your pocket. And after that, each month thereafter, you know, I'll continue to add profit. And so my monthly recurring fee is X, a thousand bucks. Once you get that case study, then I would not go into any other swim lane, but the one that you just jumped into. Okay. If you're in an Olympic size swimming pool and you're Michael Phelps, you jump into the, the lane that you were given and you swim back and forth until you're blue in the face and you win. It's a lot harder to win if you're jumping from lane to lane than it is to just stay in your lane and go back and forth until you reach your desired income goal. So whether that's six month, six grand a month for you, eight grand a month, 10 grand a month, whatever it is. But this is how I was able to do like over 500K in 18 months was I stayed within, I did not move to another lane until I figured one out. And there was just people coming into this almost like, I don't want to say on autopilot because that's not how it was, but it was a lot easier for me to talk about results every time I talked to someone who owned a gym because I'd already gotten results in other gyms before. So that conversation got easy and natural and I was just showing them results and going like, I'll, I'll give you results in advance if you don't believe me. I had that kind of confidence level. So I didn't move to real estate until I figured that one out. And then I didn't move to our third niche until I figured real estate out, right? So, um, so that's kind of like the progression of how this worked and that's how I was able to book so much. And guys, honestly, if you do this, the thing that you're not, the thing that you're going to have the biggest problem with is, um, fulfillment. It won't be sales because doing this makes selling pretty easy. If you guys have done any selling at all, it gets pretty easy. So, um, I hope that makes sense, but your income potential can really jump like this. And then if you get a client who um, who's got multiple locations or the other thing I've done is if they've got a pretty big, you know, a big gym, for example, they offer nine or 10 different things or maybe like 15 different classes. Um, and they want to market more than one service at a time. You can say, okay, same gym, but, 
um, I'm going to market your yoga classes over here. So you have a huge yoga facility in your gym. Um, so that's a thousand a month. And then you also got a spin class studio in your gym and you know, that's its own little entity. And so we're going to do that. And then we're going to do the generic 10 day membership. So if they want to run all three of those at a time, you would charge them 1000, 1000, 1000. Those are three separate campaigns. Okay. So that's why I like targeting people who have the types of services that they do that, that are in the easy column, because it's very easy to go after the next thing with them. Once you prove it to them, it, it, they want you to do more for them. They don't want you to do less. They're like, what else can you do for me? Can you help us sell teacher and training um, classes for our, our yoga, you know, quarterly teacher and training program, which is like usually like a 12 to 16 week program and the students pay $4,000 each. Okay, so if they do 20 students, it's like 80,000 bucks a quarter that you can that can help them fill up. Big money, right? So, so I hope that, that helps you guys understand how few of these you need to make it really worth their while, all right? So at this point, I want to um, just take a quick drink of water and I'll check to see if there's any questions. But if you guys have any questions, now's a good time. And then um, I'll probably start to wrap it up because I've been going for a little while here. And then, um, yeah, so, and then here's the other thing is, for the next lesson, I'm actually gonna to start to teach you how to position and sell this stuff in detail, right? So I'm gonna help you with your positioning statement. I'll tell you what mine is. And then I'll show you some examples of how I positioned myself to get clients and how I sold it. Because honestly, if you do that right, you're kind of creating the campaign as you're talking to them through the selling process and the fulfillment of the actual campaign becomes super, super easy. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in the next um, training. So I'll take a drink of water and check for some questions here, guys. If you guys can just tell me, um, yeah, thank you, Ed. Like, is this resonating with you guys? Is, is the material good so far? Yeah, good, good call, um, Ben. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, and the gym owners sometimes don't know that themselves. It's astounding to me. You know, especially if it's a one location gym owner. A lot of these gym owners like took their entire life savings, dumped it in one location and prayer and hope and a dream. And they're so busy with the things that are in front of them that they don't take the time to sit down and think about and strategize like we're doing right now. So when you come in and talk about this stuff, they either will have one or two reactions. It's like, oh my God, thank you so much. I never thought about it that way. Or that won't work because I'm scared if you bring me that much business, you know, I don't know what I, what to do with it. Like I've had both those reactions. So that really tells me where they're at, you know, or they have that and I quickly say, well, listen, don't, don't get overwhelmed. You already have the system in place. Like you have the gym already open every day. Like all you need to do is do a few key things to line them up in the sales process. And you're, you could double your revenue this year. Isn't that right? You know, why we got on the phone today, you know, to improve your business and help you serve more members. And they usually go, Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. So like, what do I say in the sales process? And then you start to figure out that they were maybe just a little bit afraid of what to say to somebody who walks in cold because they've been surviving off referrals for forever. Right? So, um, yeah, it's a good, and I always talk about guys, just to let you know, I don't talk about anything else when I'm talking to prospects. Like I don't talk about the ads tool. I don't talk about anything. In the initial conversation with them, I talk about this stuff. Hey, how many current members do you have? Where would you like for that to be? Um, you know, okay, great. Well, you know, based on like my experience in your industry, the average yearly value of a new member is about a thousand bucks for someone who's got, you know, pricing like, like you do. Is that what you found to be true in your business? Great, tell me more about that, right? Awesome, so if I have the math correct, if I could bring you 10 new members each month at a profit, <clears throat> and we did that every month and we filled up, you know, your pipeline with like at least 100 leads a month, you know, would that, would that be sort of life-changing in your business? Would adding $120,000 to your, you know, your yearly, um, gym revenue, would that change your, 
you know, kind of how the books look for you. Oh my gosh, yeah, totally. I never thought about it that way. Great, well let me show you a couple of added benefits that you're gonna get on top of that because this has a snowball effect. It's not the same every month. I was just saying that to be conservative and to make the math easy, but it's actually, it gets better each month that we do this. So let me explain to you some of the other added benefits of it, right? You get more leads, some of those leads wake up down the line. You build your email list, you build your CRM database. Um, you can rotate your offers and create a marketing calendar around the offers so that like in your slow seasons, you can run an offer to keep it busy. And then when it's busy anyway, you can run something more special like a yoga class or spin studio class because like maybe those aren't as full when the gym is just busy in the general area, right? So all of a sudden you're solving all these problems of putting money in their pocket where they never thought that it could be um, like that. And you're, you're all of a sudden in an advisor role and the sale becomes easy after that. If you're doing good after that conversation, you're not gonna have a problem showing them the funnel and saying, here's what we're gonna do and here's what we found that works best. It just gets a lot easier after that. Otherwise, if you just don't talk about that stuff and you pull up the funnel steps, they're like, oh, well, that looks super basic and stupid. And you're like, well, we've tested the crap out of this and it's what works best, so that's what we're gonna run. So then you butt heads immediately, right? And they're going, well, change this and change that. I don't like that word. And so, but if you go back to the, if you have that proper conversation at the beginning and you say, listen, <laughs> just trust me on this. I can do this for you but you have to understand how this is gonna happen in the big picture because when I go to show you a landing page and tell you why it's worked and it's counterintuitive to you, you have to be okay and keep your eye on the prize and the eye, you know, your eye on that growth goal that we outlined in that first call. And my goal is to bring you those, those at least ten, at a minimum 10 new members and I wanna exceed that. You know, I wanna surpass that and I wanna just, you know, in a couple months I want for you to come call me in and just be like, this is amazing. You know, I don't, I want to make a case study out of you. I don't want for you to be nitpicking and pulling apart everything that we have known to work and then it doesn't work out for both of us. And then we've just wasted our time and money, you know, like that's not what I want. Is that what you want? So that's the context of the conversation is why this is so, so important to understand. Um, okay. Chris, uh, Kristen Bedard, do they know how much? they make on top of the monthly memberships like personal training, food sales. So every new member adds even more to the bottom line. Um, good question, Kristen. I found some of them do, some of them don't, but I always like to work off of conservative numbers just from the membership anyway, because that's the recurring revenue part. I mean, if they do know that, that's an added bonus. I would say that's like the cherry on top that you can add. Um, and I would list that under, like, in the context of the conversation I just sort of outlined for you, I would say something like, this is an added benefit. So if you sell anything on, on top, like premium services or add-ons, like, that's not even counting those. So that makes it even better, right? Like, if you know if you sign 100 members and 10 of them sign up for a paid locker or, you know, they spend money in the cafe or something like that, um, then you can add that to the yearly value, right? Um, but I haven't gotten that too much, Kristen. Okay, Kristen has another good question. Do you fulfill the campaigns yourself or outsource any of it? Right now, we don't outsource anything. Um, I have a small remote team here in San Diego and they're actually, if, if you watched my Brian Anderson presentation, they're both from my um, old agency downtown and they're both stay at home part-time, uh, part-time stay at home moms. So they work about 25, 30 hours a week for me um, and I've got a great relationship with them. One of them's been with me for five years, the other one's been with me for like three and a half. Um, but you can do that any way you wanted. You could outsource like the funnel stuff. I wouldn't recommend outsourcing the Facebook ads, but the funnels are easy enough to outsource for sure if you want to do that. Um, okay, cool. So does anyone have any other questions for now? Um, you can always ask more later if you guys want to digest and think about it, but I think this is a good stopping point as far as teaching. And then um, what I'll do is, this all as soon as this video is done, I'll post it in um, the group and I'm gonna make just a little index that I'll pin to the top of the group and it'll have a link to each video so that you guys can sort of just stack up the videos as I create them for easy reference and access. Um, 
Cool. So if there's not any more questions, I'll just stop it here. And then what we'll do is next time I'll, I'll send you guys, I'll post it in a group when the next um, lesson will be. But next time I'll do a better job of like emailing you guys beforehand as well. I know I was in a time crunch this week, so just want to get the content out and going. And then um, if you guys have any suggestions as well, feel free to post those in the group. And then um, I'll do my best to sort of um, tackle those as I see them. All right. Um, okay, Ed McDonald says, are you going to share your landing pages and add examples? Yes, I'll do that and probably I'll probably start doing that in lesson three, Ed, um, because I wanna show you guys how I use the sales process to craft the landing page and add examples. So I'm kind of doing it a little bit in chronological order so that you guys can follow along in a linear fashion. Um, but the, you saw the gym one, that the gym one that you saw is the one that I use for every gym client that we have. So it doesn't differ that much, man. It's kind of the same from client to client. Um, but I'll show you a few. I'll show you a few different types. And then um, if you guys are interested as well, like I do get a lot of questions about video because that's a key component of the campaign. So um, things like that, tell me what you guys need, like feel like is the biggest sticking point for you. Is it like video creation, landing page stuff like lead pages and click funnels, um, integration stuff like uh, using the mail, you know, MailChimp to collect the leads and um, zapping the MailChimp lead to a spreadsheet a Google Sheet, you know, for them to use? Is it a um, sales process? Is it crafting the offer, helping the client craft the offer? So think about those things and list what you guys think might be the most valuable and I can fold that in. Um, yep, Ben Kendall, good question. Yeah, I kind of just covered that. Um, we only use a handful of tools, but I can, like when we actually go through the funnels, and the, you know, the steps for the build process, I'll outline them, but I, I can rattle them off to you. We use lead pages or click funnels. We use lead pages a lot, just because it's easier uh, for most of our clients. So landing page software. We use MailChimp because you can have your own MailChimp account and just create different lists in there for each different client for free. Um, as long as you don't use an autoresponder, MailChimp's free. So they don't even need their own account, which is great. So 90% of our clients, they use our lead pages account, they use our MailChimp account, and we just, you know, brand it to their stuff. And then we use <clears throat> Zapier to zap the leads to a Google spreadsheet. And you can even do like text alerts if the client wants text alerts to their cell phone every time a lead comes in so they can call them right away. You can do that very easily using Zapier and Twilio or something like that. Um, and I think that's about it. So very simple. You know, your tech stack does not need to be fancy at all. And I think the only one that you should have to pay for is click funnels or lead pages. So that's another reason why it's good. Very low overhead. Um, and then, yeah, so Ben, we'll cover the, the time it takes to fulfill it and like what those averages are and like, you know, how much you're looking at when we do the campaign and build stuff in less than three. Cool. All right, guys, um, reach out to me if you need anything. I'll sign off now. Thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. And uh, have yourself a good Wednesday.